is none of the above. The show where I challenge everyday people to predict the outcomes of some unbelievable experiments. What's going to happen? Which one is the toughest? I'm taking science from the streets to the pubs to the clubs to the towns to the cities, even to a desert like this, to find out why things do what they do. One shot. For my first experiments, I want to see where the lines of science end and the seemingly supernatural begin. Behind an ordinary pane of glass, I've placed a balloon, and I want to see which everyday objects can penetrate the glass without smashing it, yet still burst the balloon behind it. How are you doing, guys? All right? Pretty good. Doing really great. good. Okay. Now, you've no idea why you're here. No. No, no idea at all. Right. I want to show you something pretty cool. I want to use one of these four pieces of equipment here to pop that balloon without shattering the glass. Now, the objects I'll use to attempt this are a mirror and flashlight, a laser pointer, an everyday sewing needle, and a stud detector, which produces an electrostatic signal to detect objects hidden behind plaster walls. One of them can do it. The question is, which one? Freddy. I'm going to have to go with the stud detector. Nancy. I think it's the light reflecting off the mirror. Carlos, which one? I'd say the laser pointer. Emil, which one? I would go with the needle. OK, how come? Because of physics, you can concentrate a large amount of force over a little amount of area. Miguel. The laser pointer. Laser pointer, OK. So, which of my four items will be able to burst the balloon by penetrating the glass pane? Will it be the laser pointer, the light and mirror, the needle, or the stud detector? First up, it's the laser pointer. Three, two, one, laser. The concentrated blue beam of the laser draws a blank. Next up, the white light reflected from the mirror. And it doesn't fare any better. Third, it's the stud detector's go. But that also leaves the balloon totally untouched. Finally, the needle. And as Emil has given a scientific explanation for his choice, I'm going to see if he can do any better. There's your glass, there's your balloon. Come on. So it's time for Emil to step up to the plate. Well, it looks like none of these items can penetrate the glass and pop the balloon. But actually, one of them can, though only with the help of an expert. So, who got it right? Emil, you were absolutely right, but unfortunately, you didn't possess the skill to do what was required. Now, I'd like to introduce you to a friend of mine. Bring on the Shaolin monk. <laughs> Now, this guy is about to do something incredible with the needle, OK? You're not going to forget this. This Shaolin monk has spent over 35 years combining meditation with martial arts in a rigorous regime. With methods and movements dating back centuries, he enters a state of complete concentration and controlled energy, ready to release the needle with power and accuracy. But even with all his skill and training, success cannot be guaranteed. Did you guys see that? That was incredible. Come and check this out. Wow. Look at that. The fine point of the needle hits the pane at over 90 miles an hour, and its momentum is transferred to the glass. That forces shards of glass to break free and burst the balloon, whilst leaving the rest of the pane totally intact. So, the answer was C. The needle was the only item that could burst the balloon. It's all about the surface area contact yes. as well, because if you look at the tip of the needle, yes. it's so tiny, it's projecting all that force towards this piece of glass. And it's to do with the relationship between mass, as in the needle, and also the velocity at which you're throwing it. And you're getting it absolutely perfect just to shock the glass and basically punch your way through the glass. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. Can we give Abbott a massive round of applause? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.